So wherever you are and however you decide to come into this sacred space, give yourself this time today to rust, to warm up, to connect with our community. <clears throat> And you know, wherever you're at, maybe begin to notice the breath. Kind of coming into your ritual, whatever it may be, to kind of signal to your brain and your body that you're coming into your yoga practice. knowing that we can practice yoga all throughout the day, not just on our mats, but we bring a really focused mindfulness to our practice. So kind of whatever signal to the brain that is that we're here for mindfulness, for yoga, bring it into your space. Thursdays, we practice our loving kindness. So beginning to fill your space with loving kindness towards yourself. As the chest or the belly rises with breath, just imagine loving kindness flowing in on the breath. And as you exhale, just imagine that loving kindness landing in every cell of your body. Inhaling loving kindness. Exhale like a seed, that loving kindness plants in every cell. Inhale loving kindness. Exhale, rooting into every cell. Inhale, imagine your entire body just flowing with loving kindness. Exhale, let it be so. Just feeling that ease of loving kindness in your being as we anchor into our loving kindness Thursday. Now let's chant a single om together. You can do it lying down, you can do it seated. You can say it out loud or just feel the vibration in your heart saying it to yourself. So we'll exhale, inhale, and we'll exhale for om. So exhale, and inhale, exhale. Now 
Now, whenever you're ready, let's make our way to our backs. If you're on your back, just stay right where you are. If you're not there yet, just move there on your own time and move there mindfully. Move there with loving kindness towards yourself. And be loving your body for being able to make its way onto the ground. Now, when we get to the ground, let's bring our feet to the floor, our knees to the sky. We're just going to begin with some pelvic tilts. In Tuesday's class, we did a sequence that focused on our chair pose, and that involved some tilting of the pelvis. So we're just going to bring some awareness to that. So let's tilt the pelvis. Those hip bones kind of come towards the sky, and we get a little space between that low back and the floor. So notice, maybe you can even slip your arm underneath there. Maybe you can bring a palm underneath that low back and the floor. And now let's tuck the pelvis so that low back comes down. And then tilt the pelvis, there's space. And then tuck the pelvis. Just going back and forth between a tilt and a tuck, space or no space. Just easing into these gentle movements. Now, next time that back is on the ground, pause there and really press that low back into the floor. And as that low back presses into the floor, maybe notice how the top of the belly feels, the side body, and even the lungs. And now create that space by tilting the pelvis. And notice how the lungs might feel with the pelvic tilt. Shoulder blades are kind of more, they're like in a different position. The lungs might be lifted a little. And then exhale, flatten that back, the pelvic tucks. Notice the chest, notice that belly. And now let's create that space again, tilting the pelvis. Now let's bring our arms up overhead. Maybe reach those fingers behind us. And with those arms overhead, the backs of the palms to the floor, let's tilt our pelvis again, but keep the arms where they are. Maybe notice the upper back, notice the shoulder blades, the backs of the arms, the backs of the shoulders, and just move that pelvis, creating that space between the floor and then smushing it down. Maybe you're connecting with the breath as you do this, connecting movement and breath. On Tuesday, we talked about that water element that resides in that pelvic bowl. Water element governs emotions. So just letting our emotions kind of flow today. Just creating some ease for the emotions to flow as we move the pelvic bowl. Now let's flatten that back so the pelvis tucks. And now let's float the hands to the side, palms down. And now kind of shimmy those shoulders so the backs of the shoulders are on the floor. Get those feet nice and firmly planted. And we're going to exhale to press the feet down. And let's lift the hips and that blow back off the floor, coming into bridge pose. And now maybe in this bridge pose, we shimmy those shoulder blades underneath the chest a little more, and those lungs really, really lift. Maybe we bring the hands to interlace underneath, kind of where those hips are. We just press the feet into the ground, the glutes drive the hips out. And now let's begin to lower on an inhale. Move the hands out of the way, bring that low back to touch the ground, let's hug our knees into our chest. And then rock side to side if that feels good on that low back. <clears throat> Be rolling ankles as you roll side to side, getting creaks at the body. And now let's bring the feet back to the floor. <clears throat> this time let's bring the feet mat distance apart. And then let the knees drop over to the right. So that left knee might be kind of near the right foot or just hovering. But both knees drop over to the right. So a little bit of a spinal twist on that low back. 
Maybe close the eyes and just breathe into the space. Not trying to change anything. Let's just bask in this present moment of just being exactly how we are. And on an exhale, bring the feet back to the ground and just drop those knees over to the left. Notice that low back kind of comes off the ground or spine is flexed a little bit. Notice if you're holding tension in like that right glute, let the right leg just kind of be as it is. Don't try to clinch it or, or you know, contract it. Just let it be kind of lazy, hanging out. Now let's exhale, bring our feet back to the ground, knees to the sky. <clears throat> Shimmy those shoulders underneath the body, let the back, that low back be flat. And now let's bring our legs to the sky as if we were snowshoeing on the ceiling. Yeah. Or maybe for Bunny, you're on a surfboard on the Gulf. Nice sun beating down on your face. So however you want to imagine, whatever your feet are on, parallel with the sky. Maybe let's bring our feet apart, letting those that hips kind of come open. Maybe we bring our hands to our thighs, or maybe we bring our hands on the inside of the thighs to bring the legs open a little more, or the hands are on the outside to kind of support the legs, kind of whatever feels good. We're just kind of hanging out. That water element flows, so we're just kind of going with the flow, bringing some fluidity into our day. Maybe let's bring some awareness to the chest and feel those lungs expand and depress as we breathe. Let's exhale to bring those snowshoes or those water flippers back to the sky, parallel with the ceiling. And then let's gently, carefully, mindfully lower that right leg all the way to the ground. We keep the left foot to the sky. Notice the low back. Maybe try to keep that low back flat on the ground as we lower that right leg with awareness. And then let that right leg lower. And now with awareness, keep that back flat to the ground if you can. Lower that left leg all the way down. And with the legs long, let the feet fall wherever they fall. Notice what naturally happens with that low back when the legs are on the ground. Let's pause here. Feeling that loving kindness in every cell of our body. And then when you're ready, maybe wiggle the toes, wiggle the ankles, you can wiggle the hands, the fingers, move the head side to side. And guys, let's stay in standing. And there's no rush. Whenever you're ready, make your way to stand. <clears throat> Have your blocks handy. Nice job, guys. Really nice. Pretty well up the ankles, shoulders, neck. And you just place your hands, kind of the back of the hand or the, the palms, just on that low back. Maybe just notice, like, what's my natural kind of standing low back like? We naturally have kind of a deeper or a less deep, um, it's called that lordosis in the low back. So just kind of notice what that's like. And from standing, Let's just tuck the pelvis so maybe the back comes flatter. And then we'll tilt the pelvis so the sits bones come out. Let's just do that a couple times. Notice the feet in the floor as we tuck. And then we tilt so those hips come forward, the sits bones go out. And let's do it again. Tuck the pelvis. And then tilt the pelvis so there's that curvature. And then tuck so it's a little flatter. And then let it go. Let your hands come down, kind of wiggle it out. And now from here, let's put our arms up to sky. And exhale, sit down in chair. Here we are, chair pose again. Maybe notice the low, low back. Let's tuck the pelvis so we don't have that curve. Kind of tuck it 
So it's a little flatter on that low back. Yeah, good. Yeah, place your hand there, right? And kind of notice what's the action in the hips here. Mm -hmm. Maybe you notice as you tuck those hip flexors and the tops of the legs fire up a little bit. Okay, let's ground into that left foot. And then we'll step the right foot back with control, finding that balance with the hand to the arms and lower that right knee down. Now with that right knee down, let's tuck the pelvis. Notice the front of that leg respond. Mm -hmm. So low lunge, the left knee's bent, right leg's back. So bring some awareness to those hip flexors. Let's pause here, shoulders back. Hands can be on the hips with that low back if we're gonna bring some awareness to that low back. Let's bring some awareness to those hip flexors. Those are those muscles on the, that kind of connect like that low belly to the top of that thigh. Now press the top of that right foot into the ground. Maybe notice that right thigh is starting to sing a little song, like woo! It's active, right? Now release that top of the right foot pressing down and notice the glute and the right thigh relax. Now nice guys, let's bring the hands to the sky. Keep that pelvis tucked. And now exhale, frame the foot. Now let's step the left knee to meet the right come into a tabletop, and we're going to move through a cat-cow. So maybe you have your hand on the low back, or maybe <clears throat> you just bring that awareness to the hips. So we're going to bring the sits bones to sky, kind of tilting that pelvis, the chest comes up. Notice that's the rounding of that low back. And then we'll exhale, come into cat, that pelvis tucks. Cow, lifting the chest and heart. And then cow tucking the pelvis, maybe gazing at the navel, chin to chest. Let's do it again. Cow lifting the heart, lifting the chest. And then cat rounding that spine, tucking the pelvis. Let's pause here. And then exhale, come back to tabletop. With a breath in, and then an out breath, bring the right foot forward, that left knee is down. And then we'll come up into our lunge. When you get to that low lunge, notice the hips, and maybe tuck the pelvis and feel that left thigh respond in those left hip flexors, right? Breathing in and out. Now press the top of that left back foot into the ground and maybe you feel that left leg make itself known, that left thigh, right? Maybe it's heating up a little bit. Let it go. Let's breathe in. And now release the top of that left foot pressing into the floor. Feel the glute and that left thigh relax just a little bit. Feel that pelvic tilt. And let's exhale to fold forward, frame the foot, step the right foot back. And now let's keep our back flat this time. So we're in our tabletop. Maybe bring your hand to that low back and feel it. See if it's flat. If you want a little challenge, bring a block in place on that low back. And we're just going to kind of play around with this. Hands down, knees down. We're going to extend our right leg back, but try to keep that block there. And we do that by not lifting that back leg too high because we're going to keep that back flat. So find the balance in the hands, reach that right leg back. Try to keep that block flat. Uh huh. Because if you bring your back up too much, to see how it's going to round. That block might actually find that it's like, oh, this is better and easier to stay, stay here. If we lift the right leg up, it's going to bring a curve in the low back. If it's down more, that's more glute and the back is neutral. So keep the leg there nice and, and long and line with the hip. Now bring that right knee in. Try to keep that block there. Let's bring the knee up to the side. The back is flat. And then bring that knee in. And now let's rest the knee on the ground. Exhale. Arrange those hands. Maybe give yourself a little break. You can Lift one hand off the ground and the other. And maybe with that back flat again, that block is kind of there to keep us honest. Let's inhale, extend that left leg long. You can bring it up higher, and that's that curve in the low back, or keep it in line with the hip, and that's that flatter back. Okay, let's pause here. Get your bearings, and we're going to bring that left knee in, let it hover. Then bring it out to the side, a little hip opener. Try to keep that block on the low back. The low back is flat. And then bring the knee in. 
One more time, let's extend that leg back. Maybe just for funsies, you extend that right arm forward, trying to keep that block there, that low back flat. So you might need to tuck the pelvis just a little, right? And then we'll exhale, bring the right hand down, bring the left hand down. Let's keep ourselves here for just another moment because we're gonna do that on the other side. Let's extend that right leg back. Where's that block? Do you feel it? Do you notice it? Do you feel that pelvic? If you tuck the pelvis, get that back kind of flat, leg out, and then lift the left arm forward. Just a breath. And now exhale, lower the left hand. Lower the right hand. And move that block out of the way. Place it in front or out to the side. And now it's just, whoo, maybe sway those hips side to side. You can go far to the side, maybe almost to the ground, or just move it back and forth as if we had a tail. We were sweeping the earth behind us with a big red cross or its tail. Good, guys. Now from here, step our right foot forward. And step our left foot forward. Bend the knees, send the hips back. Finding chair pose. Tuck the pelvis, flat back. Uh-huh, and you're gonna need variation with those arms. Maybe cactus, palms together, hands to the side. Bringing awareness to that low back. Mm -hmm. Inhale, exhale. Now inhale, let's rise up. Hands come above the head. Maybe notice where your hips naturally tuck or tilt more. Not, not judging, just noticing. And then we'll bring our hands down to our side. And stand in Tadasana. From here, step that right foot back. Pick up the right foot towards the long edge. Now pick up the left foot towards the long edge. We're gonna come into our forward fold. So when we come into our forward fold, we wanna tilt that pelvis. So we're creating that low back uh, dip, right? So tilt the pelvis back and then lean that heart forward and notice that rotation in the pelvis, in the hips. As we bring that crown of the head parallel to the floor, or maybe the eyes are just parallel with the floor. We're coming into that forward fold. Notice the lungs when we were on the floor in that bridge pose. Where were the lungs? Where are the lungs now in the body? They're kind of floating. Gravity kind of allowing them to be in a different spot. Let's breathe in. And now exhale, bend the knees, and then start to rise up. Shoulders coming up. One vertebrae at a time coming up, the head coming up. When you get to the top, straighten those legs. And now tuck the pelvis. So the fronts of those, the hip comes forward. Uh-huh. And the back, low back is a little flat. Bring the arms out. Now exhale, let's bend over to the right and into a side lunge. And then notice if you tilt the pelvis back, the six bones kind of going whoop, back, or if you tuck, how that changes the way that pose feels. So over to the right, side lunge, skandasana. Nice job, guys. Uh-huh. Notice the pelvis and just play with kind of what feels better in your body. And then we'll exhale over to the left. Paying special awareness to the pelvic tilt or tuck. Mm-hmm. Good. Breathe in. Now exhale, come to the middle, let's straighten those legs. Tuck the pelvis so that low back is flat. Bring the arms out like a T. Good, now pivot that right foot towards the short edge. And let's bend that right leg. There we go. Yeah. And now kind of notice if those fronts of the pelvis are pointing more down, maybe they're forward. Notice that pelvic tilt in your Virabhadrasana too. And just see what feels best for that your pelvic area and how that affects your low back and how that really affects the way that this shape feels in your body and in your space. And let's 
awry. And if we look over the front fingers, maybe notice that right knee if it's towards the pinky edge or towards the middle of the foot. And then we'll inhale to straighten that leg, reach the arms to the sky. Good, guys. Exhale, bend, expand to the fingertips. Inhale, straighten, bring the palms together. Really nice. Exhale, bend that leg. Fingertips reach short edge to short edge. Breathe in. Exhale, let's bring hands to the hips. Pivot that right foot towards the long edge. Now let's tilt that pelvis. Those hip bones come forward towards the earth and we'll fold it forward. Prasari to Padu Tanasana. Let that forehead maybe look through those legs or the front of the head parallel with the ground. You might be more of a half fold. Wherever you find yourself, let yourself be there. Now let's gently bring those arms to kind of hang, kind of willy-nilly from the shoulders of the arms be loose. Reach the left hand towards the right knee or the right thigh, reach the right arm, or left hand towards the right thigh, and the right arm comes to sky. And then kind of let that left shoulder be heavy and almost kind of pull that body forward. We're looking to lengthen along the spine, along that upper back. The left elbow, imagine there was a weight on it, but the right arm is reaching up. So there's a little space between the shoulder blades. Now exhale, bring both arms back under the heart again. Let's bend the knees and gently, slowly, without rush, we're gonna rise up. Notice those legs, notice the lungs. Coming into star on Stinging Mountain Pose. Nice guys. Mm -hmm. Do that same thing again. So bend the knees slightly, tilt the pelvis. So the sits bones go back, hips are forward, and that supports us in folding. And let the arms hang down, nice and loosey goosey. And then when you're ready, that right hand comes to the left side, and we're going to reach up with the left arm. It can even be out to the side. You know, we don't have to go to a deep twist. We're twisting as much as our body is going to allow, and it feels good. But imagine the right elbow had a weight on it, so you're kind of expanding through the spine as the left, that right elbow is down and the left arm is up. Imagine your best friend pulling on your left hand up, but then there's like a weight on that elbow, so we create space between those shoulder blades. Breathe in and out. And then exhale, bring that left hand under the heart. The right hand comes under the heart. And now pivot the toes together, kind of heel toeing. And then if you want, point those toes out, kind of come into a sumo squat, dipping the hips down. Now notice if you're going to tilt your pelvis or tuck. Kind of see what feels best in that space, knowing that that tuck really makes a difference in the way the tops of the legs feel and that low back. If you want, you can come into malasana, if that's in your practice. So just feeling into your body, into kind of what your limits are and what you need. Let's be here in some mindfulness. And then we'll inhale to rise. The arms come above the head. Straighten the legs. Nice, guys. Bring the arms out like a T, our extended mountain pose. Yeah. Now let's pivot the feet towards the front of the mat. The left foot grounds. The right foot points out towards the long edge. Now bring the hands to so the palms, kind of face that left thigh. And now let's bend that front knee. Let the arms up to sky. Come onto the ball of that right foot. We're just going to hinge forward on that left foot. Maybe the right toe stays down. Extend through the hips and the armpits and the armpits and the fingertips to find length in the side body. And now maybe you bend that left knee just a little and start to lift that right leg up. And as you lift the right leg up, maybe that heart kind of comes forward and the back becomes a little flatter. 
And then notice if you kind of tuck the pelvis or if you tilt it, what that does to the balance, what that, and you can find a wall, I'm gonna put my hand on the wall here, to feel into that hip flex. Maybe it's more of the stomach or the back. Maybe you wanna find flat back and we know how to do that now we can kind of tuck. Now let's lower that right foot down. All the way, the heel comes down. Bring the arms up to sky. Left foot straightens, or left leg straightens. Yeah, nice guys. And now bring the hands to the side. Let's step forward. Feet meet, they can be apart or together. And let's just stand our natural stand. And notice kind of where that hip naturally falls as we stand. Not trying to change or tilt or tuck, not trying to change it, just noticing where it is. And now let's tuck it so we have a little more of a flat back. You just see how that feels in the front of the body. And then tuck it, see how that feels in the front of the body. And then just kind of go back and forth. And just imagine how you might apply this off the mat. Maybe when you're standing and washing dishes or you're standing talking to the neighbor, holding the dog leash, just kind of how that is going to affect your posture or the way your body feels just with that pelvis. Let's inhale to reach the arms to the sky. Ground the right foot. Step the left foot back. The toes can point out just a little bit. And we'll find both legs straight. And now lengthen from the hips to the armpits. Lengthen from armpits to fingertips. So our side body and our arms are long as they felt today. And now slowly bending that front knee, coming onto the ball of that left foot, and then lifting up and forward. And then we slowly begin to lift that left foot off the ground. You can find the wall with your hand. Coming into a variation of Veer Vajrasana 3. We're kind of noticing with the different tilt of the pelvis what that does to the low back, what it does to that right leg, the hip flexors of that right leg. Just kind of exploring these different aspects of the shape. And now, when you're ready, let's lower that left foot back all the way down to the earth with that entire foot. The right leg comes straight and arms come above the head. Left foot's back, the right foot's forward, inhale. Nice, guys, bend the front leg. Let's fold forward and set the left foot forward, coming into our Uttanasana. Good. You can grab opposite elbows and sway side to side. And now let's bring hands to the floor, step our feet back, and bend the knees as much as you need to. We're coming to downward facing dog. And now in our downward facing dog, bringing that awareness to the hips. And maybe notice, maybe for the first time ever, or maybe the first time today, if you're tucking your pelvis or you're tilting your pelvis, it's gonna notice the angle of the pelvis. And then let it go and just be here in this shape. Notice the heart a little higher than the head. And the seat of the emotions at pelvic bowl a little higher than the heart. I read a quote just this morning. It said, make decisions with your heart and then figure it out with your head later. <laughs> Maybe not something to apply all the time, but maybe something to keep in mind, to keep in our head space and our heart space. And sometimes we can follow that heart, follow that gut, and we can work out the details a little later. So right here in this downward facing dog, the head just a little lower than the heart, the heart just a little lower than those emotions. And now let's lower down the knees. 
and come into heart melting pose or puppy pose, those hands forward. Let the heart sink down and notice that the pelvis is kind of tilted. Those six bones are really reaching for the sky. If we tuck it, it's a completely different shape, right? So let those sits bones reach for the sky. The pelvis is tilted just like it is in our forward or wide legged forward. Breathing into the heart, to the belly, and to that pelvic bowl. And then exhale, letting the breath leave the body. Inhale, fill the heart, the belly, the low belly, that pelvic bowl. And exhale to let it go. Another breath in. And let it go. Now let's slowly lower down our elbows if they're not there already. We make our way onto our back body. However you want to make your way to your back is fun. And once we're on our back, we're going to tuck that pelvis so there's no space between that low back and the ground. Yeah, get on your sweaters or sweatshirts. You all know where we're headed. Socks come back on. <laughs> now let's just hug those knees into the chest. This is going to get that blood flowing in the low back. Now transitioning from our apanasana to our happy baby. So maybe our hands are behind the knees on those thighs and the legs are bent. Or maybe you can find the hands on the calves or on the outside of the foot. Letting the shoulder blades be on the ground, that low back on the ground, heart on the ground. Nice job. Begin to slowly bend the knees or bring the feet to the floor. And once those feet get to the floor, let the knees fall out to the side. If you can bring the soles of your feet together, you can. If that's not really as accessible, you can just kind of let the knees come out and the feet can be wherever they, they are. Maybe it's comfortable to come into kind of a reclined tree pose with one leg long and one leg bent to the side. If you're in a reclined tree, swap which leg is straight and which one is bent. If you're in your butterfly, stay there. If you bring your awareness, that breath to the low, low belly. If you breathe in, and immediately breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. No pause in between, just breathe in and out. A couple more times, breathe in and out. Let it all go. Breathe in, breathe out. And now just let the breath go. Finding natural breath. Letting our legs be long, coming into Shavasana. So we covering up with the blanket. And then letting go of any effort. Relaxing the space in between all the toes. Space in between all the fingers. 
Relaxing the palm, relaxing the soles of the feet. Relaxing the hips, the shoulders. And letting go. Just relax and get into effortlessness. Surrendering into effortlessness. I'm just going to chant Om just a few times as you rest in Shavasana. Letting this vibration that ancient yogis say is in every organic thing, this vibration that connects all of us, just filling our space as we rest. Drawing your awareness to your heart space. Just notice your heart space. Directing loving kindness towards yourself. You can say out loud or to yourself. 
May I be filled with loving kindness. May I be gentle with myself. May I have peace. May I feel connected to source. Now bring it into your heart space someone that you hold dear, that you love, friend, a partner, a cousin. See their face and extend from your heart space to their heart space. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be gentle with yourself. May you have peace. May you feel connected to source. Now bring to mind someone to whom you kind of interact on more of a superficial level. There's no judgment there, just someone that you know in passing or that you maybe seen on a regular basis but never spoken to. And say to that soul, May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be gentle with yourself. May you have peace. May you feel connected to source. Now visualize maybe someone or an entity with whom maybe you disagree or have challenges with maybe someone with whom you've exchanged differing opinions or harsh words. And even if it's difficult, you can just kind of fake it till you make it. Say to that person, that entity, may you be filled with loving kindness. May you be gentle with yourself. May you have peace. And may you feel connected to source. Now, whenever you're ready, perhaps you remain in Shavasana. We'd like to roll over and come to a seated position I invite you to do so. In your seated position, maybe just noticing 
the tuck or the tilt of the pelvis. See what feels right for you. Let's bring our hands to prayer, but then rub our hands together to create just a little bit of heat in the body today. And then bring those hands apart, maybe feeling that heat or that energy. And then bring those hands together again. And we'll close. We'll exhale, inhale, and exhale for all. Exhale. And inhale. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Oh my.